Hello, uh, good afternoon. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Again, this is Mr. Santos Capilan Jr. Always wishing you a good day. Now today, what I'm going to do is try to continue my chilled water pump in ETS room tutorial. Okay. Now, uh, to give you an idea what I have done in my previous tutorial, I have shown you how are you going to bind the graphics. This graphics, I've shown you how to bind this graphics to the uh, DDC or automation IO module. Then I already explained how the IO module or how you will create the BMS points like this manual of, of all these BMS points. How are you going to create it in the IO module? Okay, so we have several IO module connected in my automation server. For the speed reference, I created this speed reference for pump one, two, pump one, two, and three in my analog output module. Okay, this AO does eight. Now I have created my uh, this enable command. I created this in my DOFC8. Okay, so DOFC8 meaning. Uh, uh, this digital output are created in my digital output FC8 IO module. Okay, then the rest are created in my universal inputs. Okay, now uh, today what I'm going to do is try to show you how to uh, test or simulate the operation of this uh, three pumps based on a very simple sequence of operation. Now the sequence of operation, as I said, it should be given uh, by the designer of the system or the consultant. Okay. Now, since uh, I don't have a sequence of operation uh, as provided by the consultant, so I have prepared a very simple uh, sequence of operation. Okay. Now my sequence of operation is that there are two pumps that will always run when the system is in operation. Okay, so meaning two pumps will be duty. I will say pump one and pump two based on my control logic program. I'm using pump one and pump two as my duty pumps. Then pump three will be my standby, okay? Now uh, for the operation of these uh, pumps or the speed reference will rely on the Differential pressure set point and differential pressure reading or the value. Okay, then the valve. This is a modulating valve. Uh, I don't know exactly the correct uh, sequence of operation for this one, but I have prepared a simple one. Okay, then I will just show you. But anyway, uh, the main uh, bulk of the explanation that I'm going to do here is based on the pump enable. Okay, and the uh, speed reference. Okay, for the rest of the sequence of operation, that that is not final. Okay, it can be changed. Okay, then I will be writing also another uh, control logic program that will try to sequence all these three pumps. Okay, so meaning uh, if the what is being as two pumps will run and one pump duty, I will try to create a control logic program that will sequence these three pumps. Meaning. Uh, two pumps will run, then one pump will be uh, standby, okay, then it will alternate or it will do sequencing, okay. So <clears throat> that will be my next target for the tutorial of this chilled water pumps, okay. Now, uh, as I said, uh, I already show you in my uh, in first part of this tutorial how I bind it, how, okay. Uh, let me show you again the guide, okay. So. BMS points definition from IFC drawing. Okay, this is what we have done in uh, part one. Then digital input and output points, analog input and output points uh, definition. Then creation, then BMS graphics creation based on an IFC, IFC drawing. Controller and IO module selection, then creation of the actual points. Okay, BMS points creation in IO modules, then control logic programming using functional block. Now this is, this number five will be the uh, topic for this tutorial. Okay, let me go back to my. Uh, okay, let me zoom it a little. Okay. Now, okay, 
So let can let, we can start uh, the simulation. But first, before I will start, I would like to show you the control logic program. Okay. Now this is my control logic program. Yeah, as you can see, it's in the background. It is already working. Okay. It is already uploaded to my uh, automation server. <clears throat> so meaning this is already in operation. Okay, this is the program. Okay, let me show you my program. Now, uh, uh, I think I don't need to discuss this program fully uh, because this is not the final uh, uh, program. I'm just going to use this to simulate the operation that we found. Okay, but uh, anyway, uh, I have my inputs here. My inputs are pump one hand of auto status, pump trip, pump one trip status, pump two hand of auto status. Okay, these are my inputs. P3 hand of auto status, trip, run, run, run. Now for the run, I'm using it for the runtime accumulator. Okay, so I have here a uh, run hours or runtime accumulator. Now, uh, by okay, by default, it should be the unit should be zero, but I used one. Okay, so zero is for hours, one is for minutes, so that we can see any changes. So we don't need to wait one hour till we see any changes in the graphics. Okay, so th this is just set for uh, simulation. Okay, now here, okay, I have also my temperature sensor. My uh, this will be my header. Temperature, then DPT reading, country status, okay. Then I have here my two uh, PID program, PIDA. One PIDA will control the motorized control valve, okay. So what are the, now the, the parameters I use for this is the temperature set point and the temperature, uh, header temperature, okay. Based on that two temperature, this valve will be controlled. but as I said, it will not be the final one, okay? Okay, then another PIDA that will control the speed reference, okay? So based on the differential pressure transmitter set point and the DPT reading, this PIDA will give the output, okay? So as you can see, uh, some lines are denoted by bold line, meaning the output of this is true, okay? Those bold line are true, okay? Okay, now at the moment, I don't have any pump running, okay? Then my uh, pump, okay, as you can see, pump one enable pulse, pump speed is zero, pump one speed zero. Likewise, pump two enable is pulse, then pump two speed is zero. Pump three, okay, likewise pump three, okay? So that is the uh, most important part of this control logic program, the starting and stopping of uh, pumps okay now uh, for those guys who want to learn this functional block programming now you have to uh, watch my video tutorial one by one especially when i was doing the control logic uh, program for exhaust fan because from that tutorial i explained in detail all these functional blocks okay so i don't need to explain it here because i want just to show you how I'm going to simulate the operation of the uh, four uh, three pumps, okay? Now here, uh, uh, let me explain another uh, important topic here. Now, as you can see, I have here an analog output eight module, okay? Now, I opened this already here. Now, these are the points created in the, uh, in that I I O module, okay. Let me show you the in, okay the value, okay. Then do we have the input, okay. Value, okay. Now let's see the channel. Maybe we can add the channel. Output channel, okay. Okay, let me explain this. Now, as you can see here, uh, in this analog output module, I have eight AO, okay? Now I have created there the speed one reference, then speed two 
pump to speed reference, pump to speed reference. Okay, now the value, current value is this. So all the speed of the pump are having a zero value. Okay, now output this P1 is uh, connected to, uh, to the uh, output channel one. Likewise, P2 is output channel two and P3 output channel three. Okay. Now uh, properties, okay, now here, okay, let me go back here. Okay, now this is my, okay. Now here, as you can see here, what is important here is uh, the requested value. What is the meaning of requested value? Meaning what is the, what is the control logic program that is requesting for the value of this, uh, analog output point. Okay, so P1 speed reference requested value. Now, uh, this is the important here. So what uh, program or control logic program that will activate or will handle this analog output uh, channel. So what you will do here, then also the important here is you have to, before we go to the requested value, the important one here is the conversion settings, okay? So as you can see here, uh, electrical scale tap, meaning our analog output uh, module is capable of giving zero to 10 volts, okay? Now in this uh, setup, I'm using the uh, zero to 10 volt signal, okay? So meaning I, my module will give zero to 10 volt signal to control the variable frequency dive, okay? By the way, this analog output uh, control signal will be fed to the variable frequency drive okay that 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 bfd will be the one to control the uh, rpm of the motor okay uh, i hope you know already what is the main task of the variable frequency drive actually i explained it in my previous tutorial okay so electrical scale tap is 10 volts then electrical scale bottom bottom is zero volts now it should have an equivalent engineering scale tap so 10 What's the engineering scale tap 100? Then the bottom for the engineering scale will be zero also, meaning zero volt will be equivalent to 0% RPM, okay? So 10 volts will be 100% RPM, okay? So if the motor has an RPM of 2000, 2000, then when you give 10 volts, the motor will run at 2000 RPM, full speed, okay? Now if the, out, uh, if the AO will give five volts, then the motor will run at 1000 RPM. Now this AO is based on our PID controller that we use in our control logic program, okay? So this is the important thing that you have to consider when you are uh, binding, actually, uh, this is the actual binding of analog output point and digital output point to the control logic program that will be uh, requesting the value for this outputs okay so requested value i hope i have given you already the important information here for the rest okay i'll put channel one for the rest just leave it uh, default value now let's us go to the requested value now here you have to configure so when i said requested value which control logic program or a specific uh, output point in that control logic logic program that will request the value for this uh, analog output. Okay, so let's configure it. So it will bring you to this requested value, okay. Now what is important here, what is important here is this reference, okay. So you should be able to define the reference, okay. So you can, again, you can click this configure uh, icon. Oh no, no, this, okay. Uh, that one is different thing. Okay, so you don't need to touch that one. Okay, you don't need to change anything there. Now this one, this reference, the three, I think it is called ellipses. Now you have to click this, okay, this button. Select object and property. So which object and property that will request the value, okay? So we will come here, then we will go to uh, the control logic program that I have developed, a simple one, okay? Then I will look, so I will come here, okay? So then you will, because here in my chilled water pumps folder, I have this pump control 
logic program. Then these are the properties. Okay. Now what I'm going to use the property is this one, like this one, speed one reference. Okay. Speed one reference. Now this is speed one reference is the one in my. Okay, I will show you later. Now we have to select pump speed one reference. Okay. Then you have to okay, but because I already uh, selected that one, that's why there's no more okay here. Okay, so but uh, let's say uh, we will let's say this one, then select. Okay, but that is not the one. It should be pump one speed reference. Okay, then we have to select it. Okay, so pump one speed reference. Okay, now since that is the original value, so I don't need to pre press okay. Okay, then I'll just cancel. Okay. So that is the importance uh, data to configure in uh, analog output. Likewise, P2 speed reference. Okay, then it should be the reference should be okay. P pump to speed reference. Okay, select. Okay, cancel this. Okay, this one it should be also the same. Okay, pump three speed reference. Okay. So you can click it, then you can see pump is okay. So it's already the same, so no need, just cancel it. Okay. Now, likewise, the don't forget the conversion settings. Okay. So how about the DO? Now let's go to DO. Now this is DO. Then likewise, uh, this is the enable command of the pump. Now you have to do the same thing, or like this is the actual binding of the digital output point to the control logic program okay now here let me okay here let me click the properties properties okay it's the same okay wait okay let me click this okay we have here the requested value again as i said uh, requested value this is the important one because we need to configure which uh, property of a control logic program that will provide the value okay so this one this is the pump one enable so meaning this is chill water pump pump control logic then pump one enable okay so as you can see here so uh, chill water pump then pump control then this is the property point okay so pump one enable okay so select anyway it is already selected like because i did this beforehand okay i'm just trying to show you so that you will know also how you are going to bind the uh, control uh, this uh, digital output points to control logic program okay now okay now here where's my pump control okay now let me open again this a new I will let me open this in new window so I can show you now this one I will bind okay I will show you the binding but I already binded it just I will give you how I bind it now in my previous tutorial you have seen already how to bind isn't it I'm just trying to repeat it so that uh, those who have just uh, found out my channel then they have an idea how to bind Okay, but uh, to be able to know this one, you have to watch the previous tutorials. Okay, now here, uh, this is my, I'm going to bind my pump control program. Now, as I said, the control program should be binded also with the, binded, binded also into IO module. Okay, now I'm going to show you. Now here we have the P1 speed reference. Okay, so I have here, uh, where is that one? Okay, this one, P1 speed reference. Now this is binded to the graphics. Okay, now here you will not be, you will not be allowed to bind it. Okay, so you cannot drag and drop it here for the pump one speed reference. Now, because this one, as I showed you, uh, this one should be done in the, uh, an IO module, okay? So the requested value, if you can still remember, okay? So here, I already binded some of the points, okay? Like this one, DPT reading, I binded it to my uh, IO module, okay? Where is this one, okay? Now, in the control logic module, you cannot 
drag and drop the uh, analog output command and digital output command. You can just uh, drag and drop the run stat, uh, digital inputs and some uh, universal inputs. Okay, so I will show you like this one. Uh, pump 100 of auto status. Where did I created it? Okay. Pump 100 of auto status. I think it's created here. Okay, it's created here. Okay, so this one, pump one hand up auto status. So you have to click and drop. Okay, so pump one run status, pump one run status. You just put it there. Okay, now let's say this one, pump one trip. Okay, there is no binding yet. Okay, as you can see, there is no binding here. The pump one trip. Now, where did uh, this is my pump one trip? So this is how you're going to bind it. Just click, drag, and drop to the uh binding point okay so this is very easy uh if you are just uh following my tutorial i don't think you have idea uh, do you have you will not have difficulty in doing the binding okay now uh let me save so once again always save so that the changes will take effect Okay, chilled water pumps. Okay, now let us. I don't think we, uh, I do, I need to explain in detail this binding. Okay, now it's time to. I think it's time now to simulate the. Okay, now this is the program at the back background. Okay, then I will show you now the graphics. Okay, now guys, uh, to simulate this, at least I need some like. Uh, motor control okay now the problem is i don't have a motor control for these three pumps okay now what i am using now is uh as you can see here i have here toggle switches okay now these toggle switches this uh, let's say this first three row uh, this first row i can assign it to hand of auto okay then the next row i can assign to trip status okay now uh <clears throat> for the run status i can take it from the relay Okay, so I have relay here. This is the relay that I will use for issuing the enable command. Okay, then uh, the normally open contact for each relay I can use for the run status. Okay, so to be able to show you how this uh, pump will work. Okay, so I need to simulate it now. Okay, now let's look at the graphics itself. What can you see in the graphics? Okay, as you can see, I already have some reading here, like the DPT set point, I have 120. Okay, so actually, uh, that is the value from I use in my control logic program. Now let me show you where is that DPT. Okay, so this is the one. Okay, so I have here a parameter value real. Okay, I cannot, uh, I cannot, uh, what to call this, but you can see the value here, okay? <clears throat> I cannot edit it because this is the one downloaded or uploaded in the controller. We cannot play with this one. We just, uh, we can just only monitor what is going on, okay? So chilled water pump, let's go back there, okay? So I have also some reading in the DPT value, okay? So I have to put uh, some addition, uh, some value so that we will have an idea how these things work, okay? Now here, okay, okay. Now, initially, all my pump hand of auto status are in manual, okay? Now enable are all up, then run status up, trip up, okay? Speed reference are all zero, okay? Now, except for this one, there is some little value there. Speed feedback now. Speed feedback since I don't have uh, I don't have a VFD, okay. So I cannot get any value. I just can simulate the control signal, okay. Now run hours. As I said, uh, I'm using minutes. So meaning when I was trying to simulate it before showing it to you, I already uh, this pump one already run for run for 76 minutes, okay. This one also run for almost an hour. Then pump three, eight, eight minutes, okay? Now I have here my main uh, supply header, okay? So I have a temperature reading there that can be uh, 
increase and decrease the value, okay? So actually, I think this one is in, and it is forced, okay? So that I can play with the value. So I force it, okay? So this is uh, one of the important uh, uh, provision for this software that the BMS engineer can play for the value, can play with the value so that he will be able to see the response of the uh, control logic program, okay? So you can force the point. So I have forced several points here, okay? Let me see if I force this. No, I just, uh, this one I did not force. This one, did I force this? Yeah, this one I force it, okay? Now here, this, these are the pumps. This one is the uh, speed reference. Then likewise, I have here the, it should be the, it should be the feedback coming from the BFD, but since I don't have BFD, so I use the same control logic here. So I, I mean, I use the same uh, control uh, output, okay? So this is uh, analog output for the control, for the reference, speed reference, then the same uh, point I used, okay? Now this is the run hours, okay? The same here, you know? Now this is the pump run hour set point, okay? So I can adjust the run hour set point. Let's say if the consultant says, okay, or the chip engineer, when it is already handed over, the chip engineer will say, okay, if the pump runs uh, a thousand hours, then you have to raise the alarm, okay? Now let me show you this one, this logic, it's here. Okay, so pump one run hours, I have here the input is the run hours and the input is the run status. Okay, then uh, the output is being uh, checked if it is greater than or equals to 499, then set an alarm. Now this one P1 RT reset, this is the runtime reset. Okay, let's say uh, pump one already reached the, the sorry, pump one already reached uh, 500 hours. Then runtime alarm will be raised. Then you can put it in. Uh, you can stop this pump, okay? So that uh, another pump will take over because two duty, one standby. There will be always one standby, okay? So let's say pump one already reached or exceeded 500 hours. Then you can raise the alarm. Then the maintenance people will do the preventive maintenance to that pump. Then after they finish the maintenance, then you can reset the runtime alarm so that it will go back to zero. Then when it runs, it will uh, again accumulate the run hours. Okay, so this is the run hours. Let me go back here. Okay. Now, as you can see here, we are ready to simulate the pumps. Okay. So the sequence of operation is two duty, one standby, okay. Now, as I said, my control logic program is just for the sake of simulating. That is not the uh, final uh, sequence of operation. So I'm just, I just prepared a simple one so that I can simulate these uh, three pumps, okay. Now, uh, the pump, the three pumps should be all in automatic. As I said, uh, BMS will just take the control of the equipment if it is in automatic. So let's put, okay. As you know, guys, my control logic program is already running at the background, okay? Or it is already uploaded in my automation server, okay? So this is my auto automation server. I already uploaded this program. So this program is already uploaded in this automation server. Now these are my IO modules, okay? Now I'll be using these toggle switches to simulate it, okay? So first, what I will do, I will put all my pumps in automatic uh, auto position rather, okay? So now it is all manual. Now I will put pump one auto, uh, pump, that is pump two auto, okay? Pump one auto, then pump three auto. Okay, as you can see, now my background or my program, control, control logic program, uh, my control logic program running at my automation server already tried to start two pumps because in my control logic program, if all the three pumps are available, okay, let me show you. This is the control logic program. 
So meaning if all the pumps, okay, so this pump is, uh, so this pump is in auto, no trip, pump two auto, no trip, pump three, no, okay. Then I'm trying to compute how many, how many pumps are available. As you can see here, I have an expression uh, black here. If I say A plus B plus C, then I'm just trying to add. If this is true and this is true and this is true, meaning I have three pumps available. Because pump one is an automatic, then pump two is an automatic, then pump three is an automatic. So I have an expression block here that will uh, sum uh, be available uh, pumps, okay? The actual available pumps in the site. So now I have three, as you can see here, okay? Now this uh, output point I use for another expression block, okay? So if A is three, as you can see here, because I'm checking if A is three or if the output of this expression block is three, then I'll be using this. Now here, I have a demand here, okay? Pump two demand is two. So there will be always two pumps running, okay? So I'm checking now A equals two, true, okay? So uh, if it is true, and three pumps are available. So what I do, okay, then uh, there is no trip and it is in automatic and, okay, okay, the here, okay, the, if it is automatic, then I will go here, okay. I use an or, okay, I use an or, an or, okay, so it will go there. Now here, there is another option here. If there is only, because if there is only, I uh, know there is only one pump. If A, if A and B and not C, okay. Now I have another logic here, okay. Anyway, uh, as you can see here, what is being started here is pump one, enable is true. Then pump to enable is true. Okay, so we can see it clearly in our uh, graphics. Okay, so I I have here some animation when this is the pump one enable. Okay, the top. Then this is the flow. If I have the run status, then there will be flow here. Okay, as you can see, our. Uh, our pump is sucking from the load. Okay, it's trying to deliver the water in the load. Okay, as you can see here, as you can see here, my valve is fully open. Okay, then it will deliver the load, the chilled water in the load. Okay, now again to repeat, the load here is the building load. So what are these building load? These are the uh, air handling unit, pan coil unit, or any other HVAC equipment for cooling that is being used for cooling that needs chilled water supply. Okay, so th those are the uh, those are the load load in my um, building. Okay, so as you can see here now this heat exchanger. Okay, now heat exchanger heat exchanger uh, the district cooling uh, entering chilled water and uh, chilled water supply and return line is not shown, are not shown, okay? So meaning this heat exchanger will work like uh, the, the district cooling company will provide that chilled water. They will be having their own big chiller plants, okay? They will maybe in one city, uh, they are capable of uh, serving half of the city for that chilled water requirement, okay? But I don't think uh, all the buildings there are using district cooling. Maybe the, some of the buildings, they will have their own chiller, okay? So some building, like some of my projects in Qatar, they don't have chillers. So they are connecting to the uh, district cooling. So this is the uh, building that doesn't have chiller on their, of their own, okay? So they will just ask the service of district cooling to provide for them the chilled water. So in heat exchanger, 
uh, chilled water coming from district cooling will enter this uh, heat exchanger. Then the chilled water of the building will enter also in the uh, heat exchanger and the heat removal of the chilled water of the building is, be, is happening in this heat exchanger, okay? But there is no direct mixing of uh, district cooling chilled water and building chilled water, okay? So maybe there is a tube inside of this heat exchanger where the chilled water of the district cooling is entering, then uh, the outer uh, or the inner uh, side or in, inside of this heat exchanger, the water of the building is flowing also, okay? Because I have not shown you the how this heat exchanger construction, okay? So anyway, uh, I guess you already understand what I'm trying to say. So for the heat exchanger, okay? Now here, as you can see here now, two pumps are running, okay? Now, uh, what I can do here, now all the status are correct. On, on, okay, this one is off because it's not running. Enable, okay, first we need to enable, okay? Now, since this is BFD controlled, the first thing that you need to do is enable the BFD, okay? So when the BFD or when the control panel receive the enable BFD, then the BFD, contactor will be energized, okay? Then after the main contactor of the BFD is energized, the next thing you need to do is provide the uh, speed reference, okay? So BMS will be the one to provide the speed reference, okay? As you can see here, my speed reference is 100, okay? So meaning uh, my pump okay my pump uh, speed reference it's giving 100 okay now actually uh, i have to do some changes in this because if it is not working we will try to remove the speed reference here but anyway if it's not working there's no problem even there is speed reference if it is not enabled then it will not run okay so it's a simple uh, modification in my control logic program. Okay. Now, speed feedback. I don't have the speed feedback because I, as, as I said, I don't have the actual BFD. Okay. But here, I'm just showing you 100% control signal. Then I'm expecting 100% speed feedback. Okay. Now, here, what we can do here is to trip one of the pump. Let's see if pump three will kick in because the simple sequence of operation, two duty, one standby, okay? So always pump one and pump two will run. If any of the pumps, let's say pump one or pump two will trip, then that's the only time uh, pump three will kick in, okay? Now let me uh, simulate pump one trip. Now I'm using my... Uh, Toggle switches to uh, simulate trip. So I will now uh, simulate pump one trip. Let's, you have to focus here. This is our pump one trip status. Then we will see if this pump three will kick in. Okay, so I will simulate pump one trip. Okay, as you can see, pump one trip, pump one trip. Okay, then pump two. Uh, runs okay so pump, that is the based on the sequence of operation i have written the control logic program if any uh, pump of the duty pumps pump one and pump two trips then pump three will kick in okay so let's try to reset the trip for pump one Okay, now as you can see, it will go back to pump one. Okay, so as I said, the control logic program is not really flexible enough. Okay, because if pump one trip, it should stay in pump three. Then, uh, then if you have uh, sequencing, when this pump three reaches some uh, run hours, then that's the time it will rest. Then another pump with less uh, run hours will kick in. Okay, so anyway, uh, I might do that. Uh, controller the program 
in my uh, upcoming uh, tutorial. Okay. Now uh, let's see if pump two trips. Then we will see if pump three will kick in. Okay. Let let me. Okay. I will simulate pump two trip. Okay. You focus here. Okay. Pump two trip. Okay. Trip. Okay. So as you can see, uh, pump three kick in. Okay. Now, uh, guys, uh, this is my uh, tutorial for this uh, part. Now I have to do the changes here because I have to change this because this one is not running. There should be you no know, speed reference. Maybe I can, I will edit this, then I will go back uh, and show it to you. Okay. Now, uh, if you have any question, you can always uh, uh, make a comment. And if you have if you have any clarification, you can always ask question, put the comment in my tutorial. Now, actually, guys, um, as you know, I am a Filipino. I am not a native English speaker. I'm just trying to do this tutorial in English so that I can uh, cater also, or I can teach also those other nationalities. Uh, like in the Middle East or like in other Asian countries that are also uh, interested in building management systems. So I'm trying to talk in English because uh, if I'm not considering other uh, other people who are who cannot understand uh, Filipino because I can always do this tutorial in Tagalog. But I prefer to do it in English so that I can also share it to other nationalities. Okay. Now, uh, again, I'm not claiming any expertise. As you can see, uh, I'm just trying to open a door for a newly uh, engineer, a new engineer or a newly graduate engineering student if they wish to join this field of engineering or building automation or building management system. Okay. Now, uh, Actually, by just listening and looking and trying to understand what I'm doing here, you will have a clear picture of what is going on in the site. Okay. So again, if you are new to my channel, please uh, subscribe and you can also click the notification bell. Okay. Now let me remove the trip for pump two so that it will run again. Okay. As you can see. Now you can hear the background uh, clicking of the relays and the toggle switches because I'm trying to play the toggle switches and the relay uh, will be energized as per the control logic program. Okay. Now I hope uh, I have given you some idea or you have learned something even in a small way in watching this tutorial. Okay. So once again, Santos Capilion Jr. will always say God bless us all. And bye for now. Hello, uh, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Okay, now uh, this will be a continuation of my uh, previous tutorial because I have seen some uh, flaw in my control logic program that I need to correct uh, so that uh, to show you it again, uh, I did this uh, part two of the tutorial, okay? Now, uh, in my previous tutorial, even the pump, okay, even the pump is not running, we are giving a speed reference, okay? So that one, I have to rectify it, okay? Now I am going to show you how I did the rectification of that one, okay? Then let me just uh, show you first, let me go to my control logic program, I will open it in a new window. Then I will double click it. Okay, now uh, just to show you the modification that I did. Okay, now as you can see here, I have here my uh, output points. Okay, so I have my BO for binary output for pump one enable, then speed reference analog output. Actually, here it, it says RO. RO stands for real output. Okay. Then BO stands for binary output. Okay. Then likewise, uh, the same for pump to enable and pump to speed reference and so on. Now, what I did, 
because the concept is when there is pump, uh, when the requirement is two pumps to run, these two pumps should be always running in the same speed, okay? So I don't think we can let one pump run at this speed, then another pump will run at this speed, okay? Now, if the demand is two pump, now as I know, okay, uh, but I'm not very sure, but based on my experience, uh, the speed reference should be the same for both pumps, okay? Because uh, I think it's not good practice as a mechanical engineer. One pump is running at, 20, uh, let's say, 50 hertz, then one pump running at 40 hertz. So what is the, uh, what is the purpose of that one if they are both delivering in the same header, okay? So here, my program is the same speed reference will be given to the pumps that are running, okay? So here, uh, as you can see here, I have only one PID controller for my uh, speed reference. So whatever is the output of this PID controller, I will feed it. Okay, where is this? Here, okay. So whatever is the output of the PID controller, I will feed it to the pumps running, okay. Now in my previous tutorial, uh, in my previous uh, video, uh, I have not considered that thing, okay, just, uh, because I was thinking, even though even though the pump is not running, I can give it the speed reference. But in our uh, BMS graphics, it's not a good way of displaying the real-time values because maybe the consultant will say, okay, why you are giving 100% uh, speed reference if it is not running? Okay, so in order for the consultant not to give you so many comments, just do the uh, what you think is a good engineering practice, okay? So to do that, what I did is uh, I created here an analog multiplexer, okay? Now, analog multiplexer, I already explained the analog multiplexer. Now, it's like a switch, one and zero. As you can see here, I have here one and zero, okay? Now, at the top, at the top is the uh, triggering of the switch, meaning if this uh, bold line is representing one or true. If this is true, okay, if the switch or if the trigger is true, then what it will do, it will use this one uh, value, whatever is the value given to one. Okay, now the value given to one is the output of the, uh, yes, the output of the uh, PID controller, okay? So if, uh, this is not running, we will use zero. Okay, it's very easy. If this, uh, if the output of this uh, end gate is true, then we will use the output of the uh, PID controller. Now, if the output of this end gate is false, then uh, we will use this uh, zero value. The zero value is zero, okay? So zero will be used and will be fed to our speed reference. So meaning if this is not running, meaning uh, this last end gate is zero, then we will have zero here, then it will take the zero input, okay? So it will be fed to the, uh, the output will be fed to the uh, analog output uh, point, okay? Now, likewise, the same, uh, approach I did for pump two, okay? So if it is working, uh, if it is enabled, then that's the time to give the uh, use one input or the output of the PID controller, then feed it to the uh, real output for our analog output module corresponding to pump two speed reference, okay? Likewise, the same approach in speed three, uh, in speed reference three. As you can see here, now my pump tree is not uh, enabled. So that's why the value being taken here, actually I, did, I created a node there from that zero. So it will be fed here. As you can see now the uh, output of the analog multiplexer is zero because it is not running or the switch is not activated or not triggered, okay? So the triggering part is the output of this or gate, okay? So let me go back to my... Uh, Graphics. Now we will try to simulate it. Okay. Now first, uh, let me simulate pump to trip. Okay. So I will play with my toggle switches. Okay. So these are my toggle switches. So it is already labeled. 
So I will play for the Pamto trip. Okay, as you can see here, the clicking of the relays. Okay, so now as you can see here, we are showing here now the correct uh, information. So Pamto is not running. So zero control signal, then zero speed feedback. Now here, Pamp3 is running because our simple sequence of operation, if any one of the duty pumps trips, then the standby unit will kick in. Okay, so Pamp2 trips, then uh, Pamp3 kick in. Okay, then as you can see, the, the modification that we have done, that I have done, is being reflected in my graphics. Okay, so Pamp2 is not working. So this is pump to enable is false. Then this output uh, of the PID uh, will be not used, but the zero will be the one used to feed the uh, analog output point. Okay. So let's check again the graphics. Okay. So it's correct. How about if we remove the P23? Okay, as our logic or as our sequence of operation. So whatever your sequence of operation, then you write your logic based on the sequence of operation, then it will always follow, okay? Okay, so it's okay now. Now let's see if we will trip pump one. We'll see if it will do the same thing. Okay, then pump one trips. Okay, the, here it is display trip, then our animation stops, then our control signal is zero, speed feedback is zero, then pump three kick in, okay, pump three kick in, then control signal is 100, speed reference is 100, then speed feedback is 100, okay, we are expecting 100 speed feedback, okay. So this is just uh, simulating our control logic program based on a very simple uh, sequence of operation. Now I will remove pump one trip. We will see if pump one will run again. Okay, now uh, this is a simple sequence of operation. Now I'm trying to challenge those who are watching. Uh, if you have a good, uh, let's say if you have a good uh, control sequence for these three pumps, you can always send it to me and we will try your control logic program. Now, based on my control logic program, if you are also a BMS engineer and you think you have a good uh, control logic uh, program using functional block, now let's say you are using the same software. We are talking of the same software. If you have a good or a flexible uh, control logic program, you can always send it to me, then I can uh, upload it in the automation server and we can play it together. I can uh, run it for you so that we can check your logic. Now, uh, actually, I will be doing the more flexible control logic program, okay? So maybe that will be the target of my next uh, tutorial video. I will create a more flexible control logic program for this system, okay? But those who are watching this, uh, I'm trying to challenge you or encourage you to do also some programming. Because if you are watching my tutorial and you are trying to learn it, you can, even without computer, if you are watching this, even without this uh, functional block programming, you can write your own. You can check first the control logic program that I have shown you then you can write your own. Or you can tell me, or you can send me comment, Mr. Santos Capillan Jr., I'm doing the control logic program for that uh, chilled water pumps. Maybe you can try this logic. If, when, if you can write it, okay, just uh, draw some blocks, label it, this is DI, this is for the pump 100 auto status, okay, okay. Then show the connection, then maybe I will try to recreate your program then I will lo uh, upload it in my uh, automation server. Then uh, we will try to run your uh, control logic program. So in this way, there will be interaction from my viewer 
or the one following my tutorial so that uh, I, I am helping you. But if you don't have the resources, just like there are comments from my subscriber that they don't have this uh, hardware, okay, like automation server and IO modules. But if you are really interested in learning this, you can write your control logic program manually on paper, then send it to me, then I will recreate it, upload it in my controller, then I will create our video showing you what is the response of your control logic program. Okay, so that is a challenge or assignment for those who are watching my uh, tutorial. Okay, now here, uh, what else do I need to explain to you? Now, this one, okay, now if you want to see, now I have not created here the runtime alarm. So I have to create the runtime alarm here so that when uh, this run hour set point is reached, then the pump will stop uh, and the standby will run. Now, again, that is another uh, modification in our control logic program. Let's say, what do you think? If, you, if the pump reaches the run hours, do you think we need to shut it down and let the standby uh, unit run. Okay, maybe we can write the, I can modify the control logic for that one. Okay, so that uh, automatically the pump will uh, just run based on the runtime hours. Okay, so if it exceeds the set point, then let's say pump one, uh, this pump one is 155 hours now, but this is not actually 155 hours because I'm monitoring the Okay, let me show you because maybe you will be confused why it is 155 hours. Okay, so uh, and it's here. Now I'm using when I'm trying to accumulate the run hours here. I have here my runtime block. Now this runtime block, I'm using the unit one. If I'm using the unit one, it's counting the minutes. Okay, so if I'm using the unit zero, it will count per hour. So one per minute, then uh, Two is per second. We don't want a second because it's very fast. Okay, so here, so that will be another modification in the control logic program. Okay, so when let's say this pump one reads uh, more than the set point, then it will stop automatically. Then pump standby will kick in. Okay, so that the maintenance people can do the preventive maintenance uh, work for that pump, okay? So I will uh, put another software points here, pump one, runtime alarm, then pump two, runtime alarm, then pump three, runtime alarm, okay? Then maybe I will show it to you later in one of my video tutorial, okay? So I have a lot of things to uh, modify in this control logic program. But first, let me complete this. Then after I finish this, then I will create another control logic program that will control the same HBAC equipment. Okay. Now, what else? Uh, okay. So I think that will be enough to complete this uh, tutorial. Uh, first part is the engineering works involved in this uh, HBAC equipment like uh, BMS points uh, definition. The, okay, let me reiterate BMS points definition is where you will study the BMS project specification, specifically the electrical and the mechanical uh, specification. Now in mechanical specification, you will be able to see most of the uh, HBAC equipment schedule where the bulk of uh, BMS work is involved. Now, uh, so once you have the IFC drawing or the mechanical specification and the uh, equipment schedule, then you will see the control uh, schematic. Based on that control schematic, you will be able to create your BMS graphics, okay? Now, based on that uh, specification and control logic program, you will be able to define your final BMS points like this hand of auto status, enable trip, speed reference, speed feedback, okay? Now, some of the points are software generated, okay? Like the run hours. 
Okay. Now, uh, of course, it is a uh, good practice to always provide some animation. Okay. Now, animation will, uh, what you call this? Animation will give the BMS operator uh, complete idea of what is going on in the system. Okay. Because as you can see here, okay, pump one. Pump one is enabled and running. Then I have also my animation. Pump one, okay, is on. This, uh, the pump is in green, meaning it is on. Then there is a flow showing here, meaning the pump is delivering water. Actually, uh, in our practice, in the project that I handled, we are installing here. Uh, you can install here one uh, flow switch, okay? Then maybe I can include that one because but the problem is I don't have uh, these spill devices. So the, there is no use of putting here. But uh, in real application, there should be one flow switch here. Okay. okay. Or one differential pressure uh, switch across the pump. Okay. Maybe I will try to include that one. To tell if the pump is really working or meaning if the pump's impeller is already, is all uh, is delivering water because maybe the pump motor is running, but your impeller is not delivering uh, water or not pumping water. Maybe there's some mechanical problem there. Okay. So in a real application, there will be always flow proving. They call it flow proving. Okay. So because the run status, this run status, basically it will come from uh, motor control. Uh, auxiliary contact from the contactor of, main contactor of the motor okay so you have two uh, ways of telling if the pump is running one from uh, auxiliary contact of the uh, contactor then the other one is you will install two types of flow switch one paddle type here okay then one differential pressure switch okay so P1 of differential pressure switch should be in the discharge side. This is the discharge side, okay? So this is the discharge sides of the pump one, and this is the suction side. Now, if you are going to install a differential pressure switch, uh, the plus sign should be connected in this uh, pipe, and the negative will be connected in this side, the probe, okay? I mean, the probe of the differential pressure switch. Okay, then make sure you will be selecting the correct pressure range of the differential pressure switch, okay? So that your status will be accurate, okay? So you need three differential pressure switch for this three pump, okay? Now, uh, if you are trying to, if you are trying to really uh, cut expenses, maybe you can put one, flow switch here. So you can put one flow switch here, okay, paddle type. So any one of the pumps run or any two of the pumps of the three pumps run, then it will give a status, okay? So you will avoid using three differential pressure switch here, okay? So just install one uh, paddle type flow switch here. Just make sure you will install it properly because if not, uh, it will not give you the correct uh, status. Maybe if you will not install it properly, that paddle will not move even when there is uh, flow. Or you have to make sure that the direction of the paddle's flow switch is correct. Maybe you put it reverse, then it will not, uh, the contact, the normal open contact of the flow switch will not close if the pump is running, okay? So that will be some of the modification that we need to install in this uh, piping system for these three pumps, okay? Now, what else? Uh, any more question for this one? Okay, so I think uh, this, will, uh, this will conclude the tutorial for this chilled uh, water pumps in an ETS room, okay? So guys, uh, I hope uh, if you are new to my channel, you will always uh, try to subscribe so that you can encourage me to do more videos. And you can also click the notification bell 
And once again, I'm not claiming any expertise here. I'm just trying to help those who are new or beginner in building management system uh, field, okay? So everybody, if you are a graduate of any engineering course or any technical course, and if you have a passion for controls and some logic programming and some graphics creation, uh, yeah, by degree in engineering, you can always do this uh, building automation or building management system work, okay? So thank you very much for watching. And I do hope I have given you some information on how this chilled water pumps works. Okay, so again, thank you. And Santos Capellan Jr. will always say God bless us all. And bye for now.